Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The first movie I ever saw in the theaters when I was a child, my parents took me to go see E.T., the extraterrestrial. Uh, it was a Steven Spielberg movie. It was the highest grossing movie during that time. The story of this young boy, Elliot, who finds this very strange and different creature in his backyard one night. This boy, Elliot, and this creature, the extraterrestrial, become friends and have this wonderful relationship, but they go through a lot of struggles and and pains and turmoil and and trials together. So much so that in the the middle of the movie, Elliot finds E.T. putting together all of these different elements from his home. He has this umbrella that he is wrapped in foil. He has one of those old speak and spell machines. He's got pieces from uh, the dad's tool shed, and he's putting them all together, and he wonders what uh, E.T. is doing, and he says those, those two words, phone home. He wants to be able to, to talk to somebody that's like him. He misses people of, of his kind. It's tough for him being an, an alien, an extraterrestrial in this world that he doesn't know so much about, and he feels so left out. Do you ever go through different types of sufferings in your life? and you feel just just left out, you feel lonely, you feel tired, you feel anxious, you feel beaten down, and you just wonder what there is to all of these sufferings. Well, tonight in our reading from the epistle text in 1 Peter, Peter breaks down for us two different types of of sufferings, of all the things that we go through in this world that we describe as a suffering, he says there's two really different types. He begins with the first one. He says, but how is your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? The first thing he talks about is the suffering that we go through because of our sin. What does this look like? Maybe it's a child who cheats on their test and gets caught and receives a, a failing grade. And so they are, they are suffering. Maybe it's an individual who cheats on their spouse, and when it comes to light, is found out, and their spouse wants to divorce them, and they go through that time of, of suffering. And the Lord says, these sufferings that you go through are because of your sin. The things that we do wrong in this world that have consequences. But he says there's a a second type of suffering also that's described in our text that Peter focuses on. He says this is the suffering that you go through for our Savior. Peter says, but if you suffer for doing good and endure it, it is commendable before God. What does that look like in your life? Well, maybe it's you in the workplace or the neighborhood, whatever your realm is being a person who is an outspoken Christian. Maybe you're not shouting your beliefs in people's faces, but they know who you are. You express the belief that you have in Christ. And maybe people look at you a little differently. Maybe it's the child on the playground who won't do certain things, or on the weekend won't do something along with their their friends. And their friends look at them and think that they are a a goody two-shoes, when really they're just following these morals, these laws that God has given to us. And so maybe they are suffering in their friendships. There's a lot of different ways as Christians we can suffer in this world, here in our country, and especially in countries around the world. And God says, you know what, those sufferings are good because you are suffering on behalf of Christ himself. Peter goes on in our text and he says, why does this happen? He says, to this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. There's a lot in this simple verse. That first uh, phrase there, this is where you were called, called into suffering. We use that term here in the church and in Lutheran churches around the world when we bring in a pastor, that that pastor is called 
to that church that the church on behalf of God places this holy call to a man to be able to come and to be able to serve as that shepherd, to be able to serve as that overseer, to be able to serve on behalf of God and the people, to be able to lead them. They are called to be able to walk that path, not for themselves, but for Christ. You too, we are told tonight, are people who are called, or actually called to be able to be in this realm of suffering. To be able to suffer again, not because of our sin, but to be able to suffer because of our Savior. That next phrase, he says, because Christ suffered for you. That's why you were called to be able to suffer, because Christ suffered for you. My daughter plays volleyball, and at some point in the game, it always happens. Maybe some of the girls are getting tired. Maybe it's just time to be able to rotate. The girls have to uh, substitute. One has to go out, and another has to go in. And they go to the sideline with the substitute boxes, and they slap hands, and they come out. And sometimes the girl that will come in will be, be fresh, and she'll be energetic. And maybe she'll score three points, and she will close the game out for them, and they will win. Now, the girl that has just gone out and is sitting on the bench hasn't done any of that work, hasn't done any of the effort. Maybe they were actually failing while they were playing the game, but since she is on that team, she gets credit for the win. You see, when, when Jesus steps in as our substitute, he comes in just for you. And even though we aren't in there as the ones suffering the way that he suffered, he comes in and we get credit for what he has done for you. That next phrase, Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example. That word example in the Greek is described as uh, something that someone is uh, covering with to be able to, to trace or to be able to copy. I see a couple of different teachers, uh, former teachers even here with us tonight. Uh, think about it of those uh, little diagrams that you would give to a student, maybe kindergarten age, right? When they were trying to be able to learn how to be able to uh, write letters of the alphabet. And they would practice by taking that master copy and tracing over each and every one of those letters. Now those letters weren't perfect, even if you and I did it today. It probably wouldn't be perfect like that master copy but we follow this example. And Jesus tells us the same thing in our sufferings. You're not going to be perfect in your sufferings for him, as he was perfect in his sufferings for us. But this is an example that Jesus gives to us, and an example we are called to be able to follow. A final phrase in there, that you should follow in his footsteps, takes it a little bit further. Think about it like a, a brand new trail that somebody has blazed, that they have found the perfect path, the perfect area, the perfect scenario, and they take time to be able to cut it out, to be able to move what's in the way so that others can come behind and are able to be able to follow this path, to be able to follow these footsteps. This is what Jesus does when he comes down from heaven here to earth to be with us, to be like us be able to blaze this trail through suffering to be able to show what it is like. And Jesus is amazing in his sufferings. Peter even quotes the prophecy from the book of Isaiah chapter 53 in his writing for tonight. He says, look how amazing Christ is. He committed no sin, has no deceit that was found in his mouth. Not a little sin here, not something that could have been accused of a sin. There's just none. That's the path that he lays for us, that he never misses the mark. He goes on and says, look at, look at his behavior. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. Think of that. The only perfect person to ever have been on this planet. One who did have the power of God because he was God. One who would have had every right to be able to share with others what the truth really was. To retaliate with them. To maybe 
make threats against them. But he doesn't. He continues to, to hold back, to trust God and the plan that God had for him. You remember the plan that Jesus was called to, right? The mission of suffering that he was given. Peter reminds us of that too. He says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. This is the suffering that Jesus pays on our behalf. A suffering that we will never go through, even if you were crucified yourself. Not knowing what it would be like to take all of the sins of the world upon yourself, in your body, on that cross, at the exact same time. But he knows this mission, that by his wounds, his loving children will be healed. And that changes who we are when we hear that message, when we know that message. Paul tells us that as a church. He says, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Take that in with me tonight. Because we are healed by the wounds of Jesus, you are no longer strangers, no longer aliens, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. The last scene in the movie, E.T., the spaceship comes down from the, the clouds again. Children are standing around, amazed, and E.T. points up to the spaceship and he says one word, home, home. He wants to be in a place where he is not a stranger. He wants to be in a place where he is not an, an alien. He wants to be in a place where, where he is loved and where he is taken in to his home. In our passion reading for tonight, they ask Jesus, are you the Messiah? And he says, I am. He says, one day I too will come down from the clouds. He says, people will point and they will see me. And at this point, there will be no more tears, no more suffering, no more hurt, no more pain, no more toil of any kind. Because all of us will know that we are not aliens, that we are not strangers, that this place isn't our final resting place, but that you and I are all going home. Suffer here now for God on his behalf for our Savior, remembering how our Savior suffered for you. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we can't give